Hey everyone, this is the Mind Workshop Podcast, where we dive into our minds and figure out what it takes to really be happy these days. And I'm your host, Victor Dwyer, and today we have Aaron on, and I'm, we're going to be talking about a really exciting subject. We're going to be talking about finding your purpose. It's something I'm very passionate about. I think it's a necessity these days of there's so many ways to go in this world, and it's really hard to find that one thing that really makes things makes life worth living, to be 100% honest. Aaron, please tell us um, an intro of who you are and kind of how you got started in all this. Hi, um, I'm Aaron Kiros. Uh, I am the founder and owner of Modern Life Solutions, a uh, couples and family therapy corporation. I'm a mar licensed marriage and family therapist in California. Um, that's basically who I am. You can learn more at uh, modernlifesolutionstherapy.com. Um, how I got into all this, um, I, I generally have been interested in psychology for as far back as I can remember. Uh, my undergrad was in psychology and I just decided to go the therapy route. Um, I really love what I do. I love my work. Um, yeah. Do it all day and then still feel great after. So, yeah, it's me. I love that. And it's really hard to find a job in particular that you don't hate, to be 100% honest. And yeah. like, I think that it's a big piece about really finding your purpose. Mm -hmm. Like, in my opinion, like, I think we spend, mo we spend most like, let's say 60 to 70% of our waking hours it just toward our job and most people will talk about how much they hate their job and everything about it and what's crazy is that most people talk about how much they hate their job but once they get fired from their job they're distraught they're like oh my gosh what am i gonna do now it, like because they attach their identity to it but at the same time they hate their job it's a very fascinating dynamic between the two Absolutely. Did I freeze? I'm sorry. You did freeze. Your your video froze for some reason. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, uh, my my service it, it fluctuates. It's like slow and fast. Try so, try uh, turning off your video and turning it back on. Right. Yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Uh, let's see if this works. It's giving me this treatment. Is it doing the uh, thing? It's the thing. Yeah. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can okay. hear you just fine. Yeah, that's the thing where it's not showing me now. Um, okay. Yeah, no worries. We'll, we'll just go. We'll we'll go audio. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. go audio. And let's just roll with that. All right, let's do it. Let's uh, adapt. All right. So, no, I I, I see what you're saying. Um, mm -hmm. Part of it is um, just as as a part of um, just kind of like like you know not to not to like judge or anything, but just you know part of living in a uh, capitalist culture is like we're so closely tied to what we do in that we have to do something to to live you know and to support ourselves so yeah that's part of it is you have to have a job we have to have a job we have to have you know income so that's part of it and then another part of it is um and I, you know i know this is not true for everybody but um kind of just looking at um you know as, as a man in today's age we kind of tie ourselves a lot of our worth to the work we do and yeah uh, it kind of defines us a lot in that you know we are our job we are our work and i mean i don't even know how many hours a week i work but it's most days from when i wake up to when i sleep so it, it's a large, <laughs> yeah a large part of my life and who i am so yeah I, I get that and if and like you were saying if it's something that you're stuck doing that you don't like it's it can be hell and I, I think like you're right on is that men usually identify with their work mm -hmm. and they think that is what makes them valuable. That mm -hmm. makes them wor worth anything. Like yeah. you have to have that six figure job. You got to have that nice car. You got to have that nice house because without it, you're worthless. Like that's what people, most of us really think about it. And if you really take a step back and ask why, like, why do we think about these things? And it's, it's all like, like you really, it's just society's judgment on us to have a society makes us where you have these goals of we got to have that nice house and everything else like that but there's no reasoning behind it it's an ever chasing thing there's no satisfaction behind it you'll uh -huh. never actually be happy from it because there's always gonna be someone that's richer than you there's always gonna be someone that's mm -hmm. better than you there's mm -hmm. always gonna be something that's something bigger than you at some point and it's this never chasing goal of always re trying to chase satisfaction and never reaching it and it's just really unfortunate behind that side. 
Absolutely. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Um, I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, um, you gotta have a, a good amount of, like it, there's enough out there for everybody to get, you know, like every, like yeah. I think that, you know, earning a lot is, is not, um, it's a, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. But at the same time, I, I, I see what you're saying in that, um, it could get to a point where it's just, is this worth it? Like all my time, like I cannot devote time to my family or my partner or, or you know, things I want to do, taking care of myself because I'm just chasing more and more. And, and you know, where is that point to where it becomes detrimental to you? I, I think finding that balance is important. For yeah. Sure. And I, I totally agree. And what are some steps that like, let's just, in this case, what are some steps a man can take in order to not feel that need to, that need of validation inside of them to always be working and to put their status and their job as their identity. See, so from my perspective, right, this is a, this is a very complicated question because this is very relative to each person individually. And a lot of it is based on um, their culture, their background, their family, like the expectations of them, what they consider successful, what they consider um, valuable. Right. So yeah. it, 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 this, this can really vary. Right. But um, the way I look at it, right. Is um, I, I, I see through, I see through a, a trauma focused lens a lot. And by that, yeah. I mean that um, if someone is basing their value and what they can offer the world solely, solely upon how much they make and not necessarily um, building those, you know, building good connections with other people, like building a, a fulfilling, healthy life, then it's unbalanced. And when it's unbalanced, it doesn't matter how much you make. You're not going to be happy because yeah. you don't have other parts of your life that fulfill you. Like you're literally, like you said, chasing an, an exorbitant amount that it, there's no, there's no end point to. Mm -hmm. So I think that it depends like why you're seeking the validation. Is it this, um, you know, empty hole that can never be filled. And I wanted to talk about like, what are some, some trends you see when, when it comes down to these adolescent and like, like, like mm. just say these like 20 to 30 year olds that are really trying to find their purpose and make their way through their life. What are some common trends that you see within those people and how do you usually fix those? So, um, so 20s and 30 somethings, right? Um, as far as the trends I see, um, so with the younger, the younger ones, right? Um, I'm talking like Gen Z, stuff like that. Um, I, I think that they have an oversaturated sense of, um, and I hear this so much these days, just in my practice, um, like an oversaturated sense of uh, what's out there as far as like mental health disorders and kind of like, you know, watching TikTok videos and then labeling themselves like, you know, everything that come across. And it just that in itself, I think, is um, a trend that is not um, it's I don't think it's healthy because when you tend to label yourself right that self-talk of like i am this i see a couple of these things therefore i'm this you're gonna look for more of that and you're that's what you're gonna focus on and if you notice like oh i feel restless right now it must be like you know my adhd or whatever it may whatever they're labeling themselves yeah at. it's um these you know these these things are um it, it, it it's when i say oversaturation it's just this is what they're filling a lot of their heads with is you know I need to be labeled this thing and I'm going to label myself this thing. And that in itself can lead you to look for that thing and attribute things that happen to that. And so that can lead to, um, I am this way. This is, therefore this is me. I have, you know, I am this. And so yeah. a lot of that I, I see in, in the younger people, um, a lot. Yeah. And a lot of the time the work is like, Hey, these, symptoms can happen as a result of you know s scrolling too much like you know giving yourself too much of that stimuli um naturally comparing yourself to others and, and you know of course you're going to feel down and just you know a lot of things that are just um that we dealt with when we were younger but just in a hyper fashion now because everything's just at a dose like um 
And I think it comes down to the purpose behind social media as well. So if you're always looking at social media to justify and judge mm -hmm. other people, or if you're using it to uh, validate yourself, that's mm -hmm. where it can be very dangerous and yeah, where you, it, you identify with social media and it becomes a part of your attachment. For example, I used to identify with my, the content that I created mm -hmm. and when someone said, Hey, Victor, your content sucks, then I'd, I'd be hurt from that. And I'd be like, well, why am I hurt by that exactly? And then once I asked myself why it's like, Oh, I'm identifying with my content, which makes mm -hmm. it where I'm hurt from it. And then that's where I was like, okay, like I can, I can separate my identity from the things mm -hmm. that I do. And mm -hmm. that's where I can actually start like listening. So if someone says, Hey, Victor, your content sucks. Here's why. Then it's like, okay, now I'm listening. Now I'm able mm -hmm. to listen. I don't feel attacked every yeah. single time, but anytime that you ever feel hurt or you're looking at social media and with the intent to get that validation, you have to realize that there's some part of you, some insecurity inside of you that is not being met and you have to feel that within yourself. For example, I had a, I have a vulnerable child inside of me. So I would always try to get ad, uh, validation from other mm -hmm. girls. So I'd mm -hmm. always chase other girls to get that validation because mm -hmm. I was actually not happy with who I was. And I didn't think a girl could ever love me. So I mm -hmm. would need that external validation. That's what I would chase. It's the same thing with social media. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. it's, you know, you have to like take yourself out of the picture and say like, Hey, what's going on here? And why am I hurt from that? And then you could really figure out a lot about yourself. Absolutely. Um, no, I, I, I agree. Because, um, again, it, it kind of goes back to um, technology is like vastly outpacing us now. And we're, you know, we're, we're meant to, you know, live in tribes. We have tribe mentality, but we, we're kind of like seeing a global scale of, um, you know, all these, all these lifestyles that we're kind of, you know, wanting and comparing ourselves to. And, it's just um, it's 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 hyper overdrive of um, just you know I sorry I'm on like veering off into different directions but um, it's th this is all linked in that um, I think to that uh, even with uh, if you're talking younger younger generations right like the kids right now um, you know a lot of kids are they're they're, they're tablets they're babysitter and so they're kind of um, getting very early exposure to you know. All this hyper stimuli and in a sense right when they get older like that's kind of like what's guiding you in a sense so like social media things like that it's um yeah we're literally in this this world where it's just it, it's not the real world but it is real because this is this is how we've grown up and learned things and you know this is what we're trying to model ourselves after and it's just not natural yeah no, I 100% I agree. And what are some ways a lot of a lot of 20 to 30 year olds are really just uh, the word is like most 20 or 30 year olds are like addicted to finding their purpose. They go like, mm -hmm. what, what am I going to do? What am I going to do with my life? What am I going to do? And they constantly asking themselves mm -hmm. those questions. And why do you think that initially happens? Do you think it, it happens because of they're insecure with themselves and they need to find something to work toward? Why do you think they're so like addicted to finding their purpose in life? The thing is, like, I, I think that um, purpose and that that type of thing is it, it, I, I feel like it's always been a thing, to be honest, like, you know, pe people generally have this like existential question of like, why am I here? What am I meant to do? Yeah. Stuff that right and so if they have like a more uh deterministic outlook on things if they have more of a um, external locus of control type of like outlook on life and the world they're they're gonna look at things like like what am i here for what's my purpose and yeah so i i feel like that's always been a thing um it's just and i don't know may, maybe i'm not up to the the current trends but i don't know if that's like a, a thing that's like commonly discussed and talked about more often on, on, on social media or not. I mean, that, that, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just feel like it's always been a thing because even if you look back, um, hundred years ago to 150 years ago, like people had, you know, religion, we would kind of like mm -hmm. build that gap for them and, and what their purpose is. And, you know, the afterlife thing, you know, I should be living this lifestyle and, you know, it's godly things like that. So I, I think it's always been a thing. 
but it's maybe just more pronounced now because of um, social media. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. And like, is there anything else when it comes down to like, um, like maybe like top three steps on how to really find your purpose or someone that's kind mm -hmm. of searching for that and being mm -hmm. a young person looking for their purpose, what were the, what were the steps you would take in order to find that purpose for them? So one, one that I usually take is, um, I, cause I do get younger clients in here and like, you know, talking about that sort of thing is I review their values, right? So there's, there's different exercises to look at what they value in life. Um, mm -hmm. and I kind of talk with them about which values are more important to them. Um, and if they're, if, if, if the, the actions they take each day align with their values. Right. So I use kind of like the, uh, I use a, uh, analogy of a compass and what they value most in life being the true North on that compass and the decisions they make in the day to day it, are, are, do your decisions align with that true North, right? Is that the direction you're going with what you're going to do today? So that's, that's one way I, I do that with clients and, and just kind of explore that with them. Mm -hmm. um, another way is um, I just, I, I ask the general question, like if they don't know what they want to do, what do you want your future to look like? Right? Like, yeah family life do you want to be you know do you want to be living in the city do you want to be in the countryside like what how do you envision your your ideal future to be and then kind of looking at what steps from right now right because right now is the only thing that exists we only have the present like the past is gone there's no there's no future there's only now so what are you going to do now to start moving toward that direction right yeah and then lastly um as far as purpose um here's 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 the more practical part of it that i that i that on my personal take is that um you know not everyone not everyone knows yet and not everyone's gonna um have an idea of what that is so getting getting stability getting stability first in that like you need you need skills you need good marketable skills that are in demand right that's that's going to give you a foundation to where you're living comfortably, you're living comfortably, you're, you're working, you're contributing to society. But then in that you're going to have time to be like, okay, like I, I, I got my, I got my feet on the floor. I'm, I'm good to go. I'm not like struggling. Now I can think about what more I want to do, where I want to take it from here. So that, that to me is that, personally, I, I think that's important to explore with people. Not everyone's there yet, but it's, it's, it's a super important thing in that I, I think stability first and foremost, and having a good marketable skill is a good foundation to to then think about what what more you want to do and how more you want to contribute to the world yeah and the biggest like thing for me was when i realized that all passion is is multiple streams of curiosity flown mm -hmm. into one meaning that yeah once you have a natural curiosity explore it like you should explore your natural curiosities yeah. and then once you start really like weaving them together you can find one particular project mm -hmm. of all the curiosities in one and yeah. then it can eventually become a natural passion for you because yeah. you were born with those natural curiosities for a reason mm -hmm. there are these thoughts inside of you saying hey learn more about that i'm interested in mm -hmm. that and yeah. those natural curiosities are going to be natural motivation for you so mm -hmm. when you find a curiosity explore it just figure mm -hmm. it out yeah. so for example i i was really fascinated about how the brain worked so i took a class at harvard i was 15 at the time so i had to take my dad's name but mm -hmm. i was fascinated about it. i want to learn more about it so i took a class at harvard to learn more about neurology and how the brain worked mm -hmm. and that natural curiosity led me to marketing then i realized oh neurology and marketing are like practically the same thing and i knew i was going to be an entrepreneur one day so mm -hmm. i was like okay cool and so I started becoming an entrepreneur, got into marketing, started a marketing agency and really started to scale it out from there. But it all started from that first curiosity that I had about the brain that got me started into all this in the first place. Mm -hmm, so yeah. if you have a natural curiosity and you want to find your, your purpose, it starts with like really starting with that one curiosity, exploring that and figure out a way to merge all the different natural curiosities that you have yeah. and combining them. And then it turns into a passion of yours. Absolutely. No, I think that's a good point. And uh, the thing about that, too, is um, I think that could open up more doors for you and, and your passion can even change. Like it can morph into like, oh, now I want to know about this thing and explore this. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's just a never ending thing in, in that, you know, if you if you seek that, like you're going to find more and you're going to find more and 
it's a great thing actually it's it's more of um you know we're never nobody's ever going to know and learn everything but we can be um eternally um how do you say curious yeah and what are some what are some of the latest insights that you've gotten that you've learned either about yourself or in patients and things like that that you could think that would be valuable to young males that you either see like, oh, I see a lot of young males that are making this mistake. Instead, they should be doing this. What are some insights that you have for them? Oh, man, there's a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Um, so one thing I, I really just emphasize on is um, pr protective factors, right? So what I mean by protective factors is like get, get good sleep, um, get exercise, drink a lot of water and just be really basic things that when we're staring at a screen for like 12 hours, we forget to do. And these things affect us so negatively if we don't get good sleep and if we don't drink water and, you know, we don't exercise. It's just um, leading to a lot of just bad mental health symptoms at the end yeah. of the day because we're, we're not taking care of ourselves at the most basic level. And I think that it's it's funny. It's it's like the most basic thing, but it's such a gross oversight right now. I see it so much. Yeah. So that's yeah. the baseline, I think. And then on top of that, right? Um, try things, right? Like you said, it's if you're if you're curious in something, seek it and you know learn about it. Um, I, I think that these, especially now, a lot of these kids, and I feel bad for them because. It's a lot of sedating things that they have all, you know, it, it, just things like like video games, porn, it's, it's so accessible. It's so, it's everywhere and it's so hard to pull away from. But once you kind of get hooked on it, on those things, it's just, it's very sedating and you're just kind of stuck. You know, a lot of times we'll, we'll smoke weed while they're doing all that. And it just, it adds another layer and it just kind of like anchors them down. And then it's so hard to get out of that. Because like what? What, if you have video games and weed and, and chips like in Mountain Dew, like you're not going to want it. Why would you go out and you know accomplish anything, right? And why do you think that people are doing that? Are they running? So like I know why like so, some people do drugs and do alcohol is because to run away from their inner voices, uh -huh. their inner negative insecurities inside of them so that they numb themselves essentially so that way they don't listen anymore to any mm. of those things and that's why a lot of people consume social media and they mm. find themselves always doing something but they're not able to be alone with their thoughts mm. and yeah. they're not comfortable with who they are so mm. if you always find yourself having to do something every single second of the day really just ask like really just go honestly just go inside of a room go inside of your bedroom and just look at the ceiling no phone no anything mm. and just analyze what your thoughts do It'll yeah. go so far and you can see like, okay, it's because I am not happy with who I am. I'm not happy. I'm not mm -hmm. proud of who I am. That's mm -hmm. the reason why I'm always working and yeah. figure out what voices you're running away from and just realize that they're there. And then you don't have to identify with them. Like that's your choice. If you identify with the voices that are in your head mm -hmm. and you can really get a long way from that. Absolutely. No, hundred percent. Um, that's, uh, that's what I would, uh, refer to as like, uh, gathering data. Right. I tell people like, I'm not telling you to stop smoking. What I'm telling you is take a break from it so that you can experience what you're trying to cover, you know, what you're trying to like umbrella away. Like, and then knowing what that is, then you can deal with it. But if you're just sedating yourself every day, you're not, you're not, you're not facing enough to know what exactly it is that you're sedating yourself from. So yeah, definitely. And is there, is there any other reasons why you think other people, so like at some level, like a video game is a natural curiosity because there's a sure. million type of video games. There could be like yeah. fantasy video games and the, there's natural curiosities associated with that. Yeah. But what what do you think are draw people to the stimulus besides like insecurities? Is there anything else that draw these people is like that you find yeah. toward those things? Yeah, I don't I don't think it's always insecurities because here's the thing, right? It's um, with, with addictions like any anything can be addictive. Video games, uh, junk food alcohol mm -hmm. obviously drugs porn anything can be addictive tv you yeah. name it right so the thing is right these uh these these things that become addictive um they you know they're 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 stimulating things like they're they're in in uh in moderation like they're fine you know like they're not bad in moderation but when they become part of like the feedback loop of 
oh, I did this, I did this thing for 12 hours and I didn't, I didn't do, I didn't, can I cuss? I didn't do anything else that day. Um, yeah. I, I, now I feel bad about it. So I, I don't want to, I don't want to think about it or feel bad. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, you know, play a little bit or, or I'm going to smoke or whatever it may be. It, 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 it kind of like it, in a way, right. It could be behavioral thing. Cause like thinking about it behaviorally, it could just become a feedback loop. Right. Um, it, it, like you said, right. It could be to not think about certain, um, intrusive thoughts. Right. And it, it maybe just can become an understanding of, you know, a thought is just a thought it, it, it and it could be the thing of um maybe life does suck you know sometimes things are hard and not going well and mm -hmm. instead of facing that sometimes it's easier to just you know go into a different world and it's not helping but it's at least not feeling as bad as it normally would when i sit there having to face it so it, it could be a lot of different things so um, but, yeah with that with that escapism <clears throat> if there's a if there's a if there's a person that's constantly smoking weed and mm -hmm. like doing things to escape from their life, mm -hmm. what recommendations would you have for those people? And why, why are they going to that escapism? Is it because they're running away from the inner thoughts? Like what, what are the reasonings why they have to go th through that escapism? Um, I mean, again, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different reasonings. Um, I mean, one that I see here is that, um, and which, I think we've all experienced it, right? Is um, and you know, I, I can't say this for everybody, but um, I can say for me, like being young, it, it kind of sucked. You kind of have to figure things out, and you know, you don't know what friends to trust, and you just all kinds of stuff, right? Drama, and so it's 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 hard. You kind of have to. It's one of those things where you, only you can navigate it and learn along the way. Nobody's going to live your life for you and show you, you know, the proper way to do things. You just kind of have to, you know, you got to go through heartbreak. You got to go through all kinds of stuff, and yeah. it's just. Um, it's not easy, but at the same time, right, you you kind of got to manage it and figure it out and embrace the suck, right? It's going to suck, but yeah. not not let yourself totally rely on these um sedations to you know, like cuz you're not you're not when you when you rely on the sedations, right? It's it that becomes habit and the habit becomes lifestyle etc yeah. right yep. so um i think um a lot I, I think what i try to help a lot of people understand is normalizing that you know things do suck but there's another side to it like in it sucking you're gonna learn how to navigate these situations so that they don't suck more in the future and yeah. so that i think that's part of it is that you know again all these things are way I, I, you're in texas right yeah uh, and here in California, I mean, weed is legal. So it, all these kids have it. Like they literally can get, you can get it anywhere. It's literally just like candy now. And so <laughs> these things are accessible, like, you know, video games, weed porn. It's just like so easy to get any of these things. So the mm -hmm. fact that they're surrounded by it, 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 it's, it makes it too easy to fall into these, you know, these, these, these things. So this maladaptive coping is this kind of a normal thing here. Um, and it's accepted widely. And so you know, again, like kind of learning also about what that could turn into is important because, you know, crutches are readily available everywhere. Yeah. And like, it's honestly only going to get worse. Yeah. To be a hundred percent honest Absolutely. in the future of these crutches is what you called it or this escapism. escapism. Mm -hmm. What are some ways that we can protect ourselves in the future as more and more kids grow up with more and more stimulation mm -hmm. it's going to constantly get worse and worse uh running away from these insecure thoughts mm -hmm. what are some ways that we can counter those things and live in a future that we are still able to identify those insecurities mm -hmm. and not run away from them yeah, so this is a uh, this is another complicated question, right? Because <laughs> yeah, I think part of it is like it's mostly inevitable, honestly. Um, it's uh, it, it's so I understand, I get it when I see, you know, people use the tablet as the the babysitters. I get it, like you, mm -hmm. you got a lot on your plate and can't be everywhere at once, and we all cannot have a you know dual income household and and then watch the kids and then you know yeah so i understand so i think part of it is inevitable in a way but the other part of it is if you can do something about it right 
um i mean i mean if i if if i decide to have kids like they're not they're not gonna get that 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 uh how do you say um i'm not i'm not going to put them in the position where they're exposed to like a bunch of stimuli and and then that's kind of the way they become wired um they're not gonna have a phone until they're like at least 16 17 you know and so Mm -hmm. i'm gonna try to raise them as close to you know the way i was raised as possible in that you know we interact with people which grounds you too because you know um when you're interacting with people and you know i'll obviously modeling for them you know healthy ways to interact be open be assertive not hold back things not um not be aggressive and that's part of it too in that you know if we have a good healthy family unit that's just uh, modeling good healthy communication that's important too because you know we we support and stand by each other and you don't have to go to the, the computer or you know for guidance you you come to us and we come you know we come to you and we all support each other and we you know we communicate openly and we're respectful so i think that's all part of it too is this complex layers of, of things that we can do but um yeah i mean it's it's in a, in a way it's isolating people when you know when they're relying on their their stimuli and their electronics they're just isolating from each other instead of coming together yeah yeah i totally agree with that and is there anything else that you that has been top of mind lately that you've been either seeing around, uh, you might see it on the internet, and you wanted to address it and communicate it? Um, hmm. that's, uh, that's that's pretty. Or it uh, could have been any topic on the podcast, like anything that you've been wanting to communicate that you wanted to get out to the world. Um, you know, um, hmm. I, yeah, that's a good, that's a good yeah. question. It, it, I, it, I, I, I cannot narrow it down, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot we can get into. But I, I, as far as right now, um, you know, I guess like just from my, my you know, the, the takeaway from our, you know, from our talk right now is, um, you know, t- t- you know, take care of your basic needs, you know, take care of your basic needs and you will notice that you feel a lot better. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And um, just so I know, those basic needs are food, or like basic food, water, exercise. Yeah. Um, yeah. And is sleep. there anything else in there? Sleep. Sleep. Yeah. Sleep's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. So you know, and it, it all it all ties together because you know, if you're not up at night scrolling, you know, you're you're gonna get some sleep. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So yeah, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. Oh, but, this is great. Uh, I love. I know we can go on this for seven more hours. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Aaron, please tell them how to find you if they ever want to contact you. ModernLifeSolutionsTherapy.com. Okay, uh, awesome. Yeah, that's where you can find me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Yes, thank you so much for coming on, and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you so much, guys.